Well met. I'm Dave Kozak, Hearthstone's lead mission designer, welcoming you to another Hearthside chat. And this is a big one. Last week we arrived in the Witchwood, and players have been terrorizing one another with terrible monsters and ferocious worgen. But there's more to come. Next week, the single-player content for the Witchwood unlocks. We're calling it The Monster Hunt. And we're going to take back the Witchwood by force. If you play the dungeon run in Kobolds and Catacombs, the monster hunt will feel familiar. You'll take on the role of a hero, and you'll venture deep into the Witchwood, defeating a random series of monstrous bosses. With each victory, you can gear up, building a stronger and stronger deck with the treasures you find. There's over 40 all-new encounters and new treasures to go along with them. Now, that all sounds good, but nothing is as it seems in the Witchwood, and there are some surprises in store. To tell you all about it, I've assembled the entire mission design team. Let me introduce you to Paul. Hi, I'm Paul Wynn. I'm so excited to be here and to be talking about the monster hunt. Okay, so uh, Paul, in the dungeon run, players played as the nine regular Hearthstone classes, but something's different this time. Something is different. The Witchwood is coming alive and it's teeming with eerie monsters. So to help you out, we've assembled a team of four monster hunters to deal with this rising threat. Okay, so what's new about them? Well, each of the monster hunters builds on top of the regular Hearthstone classes, but they all come with a new, unique hero power. It changes how you played with cards you've known and loved in the past. So, for instance, Tess Greymane is one of our monster hunters. What does she do in the monster hunt mode? Tess has a hero power called Scavenge that lets you discover any class spells that's been cast that game and add it to your hand. Well, so if a monster casts a spell at me and I, and I like it, I can scavenge for it and cast it right back at the monster? Yeah. Ugh. Or if a monster casts a secret, you might scavenge and discover exactly what that secret is and know how to play around it. Tess is pretty resourceful. Now, you designed one of our other monster hunters and it turned out to be one of my favorites. So tell me all about uh, Darius Crowley. So Darius is a cannoneer. And he starts the game with an indestructible cannon. When you use your hero power, the cannon fires and damages the minions across from it. And if you line up the cannon just right, you can even hit two minions at once. If any of those minions die, your hero power refreshes, so you can fire your cannons over and over again. It's super OP and super satisfying. You monster! Darius is all about positional play, so you want to be extremely careful with how you sequence your attacks and where you place your minions. He's an absolute blast to play. Now, Darius can find unique treasures in the Witchwood, right? Right. For example, Darius has a few passive treasures that makes his cannon stronger. You might find one that makes it do more damage, or one that makes your cards cheaper every time you fire your cannons. Each monster hunter has unique, exclusive treasures that play into their strengths. Okay, Paul. Favorite thing to do with Darius the Cannoneer? Go. Definitely finding ways to get multiple cannons out at once. I got so close to getting five on the board, but I ended up dying before I could. All right, now that's just half of our heroes, so who else is jumping into the monster hunt? Well, there's Houndmaster Shaw, who loves to rush into battle, and Toki, the time tinker. I can't wait to talk more about Toki in the future. Or, or was it the past? I don't know. There's just too many timelines. I can't keep track of it all. <laughs> no kidding. Now, I'm excited for people to try out the new Monster Hunters, so thank you, Paul, very much. There are a lot of shenanigans that our Monster Hunters can pull, but their work is cut out for them because there are all new encounters in the Witchwood. And so, let me introduce you to the mission team's newest designer, Giovanni, who worked on some of these encounters. Hey there, Giovanni Scarpati. So, how many encounters are in the Witchwood? There are over 45 unique bosses, if you count the Nemesis fights. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll, we'll talk about those in a second. All right, so these are all new encounters. All of the bosses you'll face off against are unique to the Witchwood, lovingly handcrafted to accentuate the theme and mood of the set. Smooches! All right, so what are some of your favorites? Ravencaller Kozawart is one of the zanier bosses. His hero power takes a page from his collectible version, adding a random one-cost minion to his hand. Who's a pretty bird? He's an earlier boss, so not too difficult, but he has some great dialogue that's been a crowd favorite in our playtests. No! Why? They're just birds! So some of the encounters are, are beefed up versions of the collectible cards, uh, but some of them are totally new, right? Most of the bosses are unique to the monster hunt. For example, there's Grotto the Bog Warden. This is my bog. He's a bog beast who rules over the swamps, raising your defeated minions as zombies. <laughs> They're one attack, three health minions that explode on death, dealing one damage to all characters, including both heroes. 
Are they dropping the same treasures as in Cobalt's and Catacombs? While some old fan favorite passive treasures have made a return, the majority are all new. On top of the standard ones, each hero has some treasures exclusive to them, and occasionally you'll run into rarer bosses that'll drop their own unique treasures. Oh, tell me about that. Here's an example. Grub is a boss you can encounter earlier in a run. He has a hero power that allows him to pick up his minions and chuck them at your face. If you take him down, you'll be offered his hero power as a spell, powered up even further. When you play it, you'll toss all the minions in your hand directly at your opponent's face. It's a great finisher. <laughs> wow, that is pretty nasty. Uh, now, earlier you mentioned something called a nemesis fight. Okay, tell me about that. Each of our monster hunters have their own unique nemesis that only they can fight. I've tracked you down at last, Crowskin. Have you tracked us? Or have we lured you here? We wanted to bring a subtle narrative to the monster hunt to help capture these heroes better. Plus, it allows you to build your deck with the final boss in mind until your first victory. Oh, so we get to hint at like the bigger story happening in the Witchwood. Okay, uh, Giovanni, one last question. Uh, you got to do some balancing work for the dungeon run, but the monster hunt's really your first big project on Hearthstone. So what's been your favorite thing to work on? There's so many different aspects of the game that designers get to touch. I love working on marrying the dialogue, art, and game mechanics in a way that brings the bosses to life. I've got one of those somewhere. If I can get a player to chuckle, Double roll their stand. eyes, or throw their hands up in the air in disbelief, I consider it a job well done. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, that wraps it up for the Monster Hunt. Almost. We haven't talked about our big villain, Hagatha the Witch. Now, she's already causing havoc in ranked games, and it's gonna take all four of our Monster Hunter heroes to take her out. The fight against Hagatha is only unlocked by defeating the Monster Hunt with all four heroes. That will unlock the final challenge, but we're not gonna talk about that today because, you know, frankly, I don't wanna scare you guys. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the woods.